Hey what's up everyone and in this video I have two HP laptops. They both are HP 250 but one is an older model and the other one is a newer model. The older model has a good case except the plastic around the brass bolts is a little bit damaged. The motherboard on this laptop is dead and unfortunately cannot be repaired but the rest of the hardware is pretty fine. Also I have used this model for testing other motherboards and in general from the inside the laptop is in a good condition. The other model or the HP 250G6 has a 6th generation Intel i3 CPU with AMD Radeon graphics and this is the DDR4 motherboard but this laptop is in a really bad condition. The case has cracks from all sides around, the keyboard is partially working, some parts of the laptop are missing and the AMD Radeon graphic card isn't working. The laptop will work until I install the IMD drivers. After installing the IMD drivers, the laptop will start to crash with a blue screen or after some attempts I'm getting black screen only. In general the both laptops are for parts only but in this video I'm going to use the both laptops to build one working and except the usual restoring process I'm going to show one very cheap solution and maybe many people will say that this is the impossible fix. This HP laptop has a problem with AMD Radeon R5 330M GPU. I mean the GPU chip is failing due to overheating or some other damage. But except the AMD GPU, this laptop has integrated Intel HD 520 graphic card. Which in this case is a great thing. In this case, we're going to repair the laptop, but the repair will cost zero. Actually, I will turn off the dedicated AMD GPU. And to do that, I just removed these two power conductors. And that's all. It's very simple. I just unsoldered the boat and the laptop is fixed. Now the laptop will use Intel HD graphics as primary graphics. Actually, the laptop won't even know that there is a dedicated GPU on the motherboard. Probably you may ask, what if I remove the whole GPU chip? What is going to happen then? In this case, the laptop won't be fixed because the GPU has many more connections from below, starting from voltages, signals and etc. I tested this method with many different laptops, with AMD and Nvidia graphic cards and it's totally possible with a boat. Just some laptop models may request removing additional MOSFETs. I mean it all depends on how the motherboard is designed, how the motherboard is made and from how the power and the signals are circulating. I will make this even much simpler. Now let's imagine that this is a motherboard and when we press the power button all the parts start communicating with each other and if everything is ok the laptop will start, then proceed to boot into the windows and everything is great. But if some part failed, then the laptop won't start. In this case, the problem is the GPU. So I cut a power between the dedicated GPU and the rest of the hardware, but the signals are still going on. So now, when I press the power button, the hardware is going to be a little bit confused. And the hardware is going to be like, everything is fine, the voltages are fine, the signals are fine, but where is the dedicated GPU? Ok, nah. That does not matter. I have Intel HD and I don't need another dedicated GPU and all is fine. And the laptop will start normally. The hardware is going to be a little bit confused and later everything will work fine with no problems at all. This is a very simple solution if you want to repair the laptop that has a problem with dedicated GPU but without doing any actual repairs. I mean this is not a repair, just removing two parts and nothing else. But from the other side, the motherboard is saved and it will continue to work just normally with integrated GPU without any problem. Now, when the things are working fine, I move to disassemble the both laptops. One of these laptops will finish for parts, the plastics will recycle and from the rest of the parts I'm going to build one functional laptop. I mean, what is missing from one laptop I will add to another. What is bad from one, I would change to another and etc. Uh, 
After finish with this assembly, I move to cleaning. This HP laptop in general is in a good condition. One side, where the hinge is, is already repaired. And later I will repair the other side. The case is clean because this laptop was used as a test playground. I mean, testing other HP 250 motherboards. But anyway, I have done some cleaning again. After finish with cleaning, I move to returning some broken parts to the case, mostly the plastics with a brass. And to stick these plastics, I used two compound epoxy glue. This epoxy glue is drying slower, so after sticking all the parts, I need to wait about 24 to 36 hours until the glue is stone dry. Also later, if I need to make some additional modifications, I can do it easier, without worry about losing quality on the parts that are sticked. Now when I finish with the glue, I move the case aside. And now I continue with cleaning the motherboard, the heatsink, the cooling fan and other parts. Well, and now when all the parts are clean and shiny, I move to add thermal paste and mount the heatsink to the motherboard. Here I add a little paste to the GPU as well. The GPU is turned off, but in some cases the GPU may still generate a little heat, so it's better to have some thermal paste on it. After I finish with the motherboard, I move to partially assemble the laptop, I mean from the bottom side only, because I want to run more tests before I continue with anything else. Actually, I test some other th stuff here, other tricks, but that is going to be for some other video.
on this laptop, I have done some basic, let's say, upgrades. I add 80 gigabytes of RAM and 250 gigabytes SSD. I mean, these are not actual upgrades because the both laptops were without RAM or disk. 80 gigs of RAM and 250 gigs SSD is going to be an out for this machine. This laptop has an Intel i3 6006 CPU and it is not some powerful CPU. So 80 gigs of RAM and 250 gigs SSD is just fine here. Here I faced with another thing. The black bottom case has no space for VGA port compared with a gray one. But this is not a big deal because making space for the port isn't that hard. Carefully, I measure where the port is. I mark where I need to cut and drill and then using dermal tool, I start with making this space. Now the case is fitting fine. The port is a little bit larger, but it's okay. I mount the bottom case to protect the motherboard from below and I move to clean the rest of the laptop. Unfortunately, I cannot perfectly clean the case because over the case was some glue. I think it's some sort of super glue, but I'm not sure exactly. Yes, I tried to remove the glue, but the case started to peel off. I mean the plastics. So the damage will be much bigger if I remove the glue. But anyway, I've tried to clean the case much as possible. Because there is one missing button, I've tried to remove a button from the other gray case. But the keyboards are different. I mean the key mechanism is different. Yet the keyboard can be still used, but the key is much lower than the rest of the case. I mean the rest of the keyboard and it feels like pressing butterfly keys on the MacBook. I've tried to find the original mechanism with a key, but unfortunately, this is all that I have. I only have these two HP laptops, and from these two, I need to make one. Actually, I'm very limited with the ingredients. After I finish with the keyboard, I move to clean the rest of the case and the display. And this is almost the final result. And I will show the laptop in one shot now. This is the motherboard without two power inductors. And everything is working just fine. Now I move to reinstall the windows and later again with installing all the drivers and the updates. After I finish with installing Windows, Windows drivers and updates, I move to placing the final parts. Also, I search for some missing screws, rubbers and etc. Because to make this laptop complete. And finally, from all this crap, we'll have one fully functional laptop. The hinges are fine, opening and closing the lid is just normal, as nothing happened before. The laptop hardware is working perfectly normal as expected. If we check the device manager, there is only Intel HD graphics. The laptop is acting like there is no dedicated GPU at all. In general, now this machine is good for most basic daily tasks, like watching movies and videos, working some light jobs, learning something, working with documents, browsing the web, listening to music and etc. And the laptop is pretty fast for the age. Also, in the old case, the speakers were pretty bad. One of the speakers has not worked at all and the other speakers has a cracking sound. But now, with the other speakers, the sound is perfectly fine. Shiver inside doesn't show, but my nerves are inside out. It's because.
Well, and this is all about this HP laptop. The main goal of this video was to make some laptop out of trash and scrap. And I want to show a very simple solution for a dedicated GPU. I mean, there is a lot of laptops that are standing aside because they have problem with a dedicated GPU and because the repair of a dedicated GPU can be costly and a little bit risky. And this is a very simple and cheap solution. I mean, it costs nothing. Yes, this laptop is without better GPU, but the laptop is fully functional. Also, the disk and the RAM that I've used here previously were left to me as a gift for free. I made some upgrades to some other laptops and I got the boat as a gift. So making this laptop was basically from scrap and parts that I already have. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope this video will give ideas and inspiration to fix some stuff, maybe some tech or maybe some other things. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.